So we finally come to the final chapter of Way of the Wolf by Jordan Belfort called Art of Looping. And it's, I think it is the longest chapter. It has a lot of practical information on how to close the, the deal with your pros prospect. So he talks about how rarely when you ask for, for the close, for the, the buy, re very rarely the client will say yes in the, for the first time for in the first ask and also it's very rare that they will say no flat out no most of the time you get some kind of a maybe and he warns jordan warns us to expect that like we should not be frustrated by the the maybe by the objections that the prospects raise because that's that's normal we have to expect that so that's when looping comes in, into the picture and looping, looping means simply that whenever an objection is raised, you have to come back in your pitch, come back in your sales presentation and present some more information or, or present the information in a different light so that you can raise the certainty of the each of the three tens on your prospect's mind. So how does it work? Whenever a prospect raises an objection, and it could be like, oh, I have to think about it. Oh, I don't know if I have money right now. I have to talk to my wife. I have to talk to my boss or whatever it is. We already know that it just means that the, the prospect's not certain on maybe on, on you, your product, your company, but it doesn't matter because anytime a prospect raises an objection, you don't reply, reply specifically to the objection, at least not at the first time they raise it or they raise one. What you do is you reply, according to Jordan, you have to listen to your prospect so you're not a robot, but you go right back into the sales presentation. So what, what you would say is something like, okay, I hear you. I hear what you're saying and, and I get it. But just between you and me, do you like the idea? Does the idea make sense to you? Do you like the idea? So what you're doing is like kind of putting money aside and that's the tonality you should use. Just like money as money aside. Like if this, if this were not a sales pitch, do you like the idea? So this makes the prospect think about purely the idea and puts his defenses down. And then you can engage the level of certainty because the prospect can, can reply in several ways. He can reply, yeah, I like the idea, which would put me put him like in a a five on the scale of certainty about the product. Or he can say like, oh yeah, I really like the idea. So you can see here, the words may even be the same or similar, but the tonality of the, the prospect makes it all the difference. It makes all the difference. Especially because once you gauge his interest in, in the idea, his certainty on the product, then you match. Remember, pace and lead. You pace his tone and you say, exactly, it is a great idea. And the beauty of it is blah, 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 blah. You come back into the pitch, you present more information, you present an airtight logical case for your product. But remember to, to pace the tonality of the prospect and then lead. So if he's in a six in the scale, you pace him at a, a 6.3, 6 6.5, and then you raise the tonality, raise the enthusiasm and lead him into more certainty. And, and that also happens. This is one of the tens, right? So the other tens, uh, certainty about you and the company. So if, if there's another objection, you can probably say, okay, I understand what you're saying, but let me, let me ask you this. And again, like the money aside tonality, but let me just ask you this, like curiosity. If I were... Jordan Belfort gives an example of a guy, a salesman trying to, to open a brokerage account with a client and sell him Microsoft stock. So the example to raise certainty about you would be, oh, let, let me ask you this. If I were your broker for three years and I recommended you NVIDIA and Tesla and whatever, then you can show you're an expert. Then, you, But you have to kind of run this movie through the prospect's, prospect's mind. Like if you already knew, if he already knew you, if he would if he would have the same objection, he probably wouldn't. 
And then you, you go back to the to what Jordan calls the Forrest Gump introduction. It's like Forrest Gump in the movie. He always says, my name is Forrest, Forrest Gump. So you run this loop and then you say, so, okay, let me, I don't have the luxury luxury of a track record with you. So let me reintroduce myself. And then you talk about your history, your history with the product, your history with the company. So you kind of get a one-two punch because you can go right on talking about the company too and raise the certainty on that front. And that that's are all the loops. You know, you, you have to see where the prospect is not so certain. And then you have, remember, you have to have several scripts. So you have a script about the product, about, you know, one, two or three loops about the products, about different benefits, about different points of view about those characteristics of the product, a script about you, a script about your company. And But remember to always retain in control of the conversation. Don't go off to Pluto. Don't start talking about fishing or about hiking or about other things in order to create report. You're not trying to make a friend. You're trying to make a sale. Of course, from human to human. But don't lose control. Don't let the customer take control of the conversation. You're here to raise his certainty. And then we we come to, once you raised all the certainties, we have also to lower the action threshold. Remember, it, it must be really easy for the prospect to buy from you. Uh, the process must be easy. And if the prospect is still not 100% certain, you can lower the, the action threshold by once you... You try to close first, like the first time, and then all the objections came, you know, came to the to the top of the mind of the prospect. Now you can try to close again, but then you can say something like, "Okay, since we don't know each other, this is the first time that we're doing business. We should like make a small a smaller order for the, this first time, so we can just get to know each other a little better." And those are the kind of things that you can do to lower this action threshold, make it easier, make it less of a risk. And there are a lot of standard things that you can do, like uh, money back guarantee, no, question, no questions asked, lower the price, lower the commitment. Though All those things make the taking action easier. And remember the equation, the action must be lower than the result, the benefits. So you can stress the benefits of the product while lowering the risks and the, the energy that the prospect has to spend on it. And lastly, remember the pain threshold. We should try to, to paint a picture of our customer, our prospect. What will happen in the future, future pacing? What will happen if we do business together and all the benefits that he will have? And if we don't do business together, then... If you gathered intelligence in the right way, you will know what worries your prospect. So you can say, oh, in a year from now or three years or five years, what will happen if we don't make business now? You can miss a, an incredible opportunity. And if we do business, the risk is very low. And But one year or three years from now, you could you could have this all these benefits and you always go back into the sales pitch and your script. So that's the final chapter. I really recommend that you read the book because he goes in a lot of detail that I don't have time to go into here. It is very interesting. He he, he does like the the whole the whole sales speech. He go he goes like with a lot of detail on all the all the loops, all the the sentences that he can use. He talks about the tonalities in different parts of the the sales speech and the loops. So. It is a, a really interesting book, especially if you don't know much about sales, which, uh, which is my case. You can see how it works and you can see it happening in, all around you. When people try to sell to you, you, you can see it, you can understand what is happening, what they're doing wrong, which is even funnier. And it, it will help you to be a more persuasive person, even if you're not a salesman. There's a lot of interesting information, especially about tonalities and about pacing and leading that can help you be more persuasive and be, be more charismatic. So I think this is a really good book and I hope those videos were helpful as well. And yeah, this is the last video on this book. I'll leave the, the playlist about other chapters in the description. See you next time.